Hey there YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. Uh, this time, amazingly, not to talk about a new product release, but this time we're going to talk about performance and choosing the right termination for your installation. Uh, quite frankly, the weakest link in Ethernet uh, networks is by far the terminations. It's not the cable. So we're going to talk about the most desirable to the least desirable way to terminate Ethernet cable and also give you some little uh, helpful tips along the way in regards to category and how that may play into it as well. So the best way of terminating an Ethernet cable, and, and I'm just going to kind of quickly go over what we've got here. We've got Keystone Jacks, Punchdown, and Toolless. Uh, although they terminate differently, the printed circuit boards inside are the same and they are, give you the same performance, although they, they, the way they wire up is different. Um, then we have field termination plugs. And uh, these are essentially, uh, well, <laughs> it's kind of like a toolless keystone jack with an identity disorder. Um, it, it ends up being an RJ45 plug uh, on the end of it and it has a printed circuit board inside. And uh, these things are actually quite useful and can give you the best performance when you least expect it. And then uh, the next way, and probably the least desirable way uh, from a performance standpoint, uh, is RJ45 plugs. Now, RJ45s, they don't have any of the special secret sauce inside them, like com you know impedance matching and component rating, and they're not category rated. So basically they're just essentially pieces of plastic with eight golden contacts on the inside. The, the thing about RJ45s is that um, the only thing that separates one from another, you know, as opposed to being shielded or passed through, is the size of the cable that it can accept inside. In other words, um, the cable is going to go in and you're going to have eight conductors going under eight pins. You know, the RJ45 has got to have a retaining latch. It's got to have a way of keeping the cable uh, uh, inside the plug so it doesn't pull out easily. The dimensions on the outside are all standard. So what really differentiates uh, RJ45 or 8P8C plugs, as they're actually supposed to be called, is the, uh, the type of the inside diameter or basically the, uh, the fitment of the plug. Really, uh, RJ45 plugs do not have a category rating on them. Um, the only reason True Cable can get away with putting a category rating on our plugs is because we actually do take certain ones and fitment test and performance test and then we sell the plugs as suitable for use with that particular cable. The best way, ideal way, is in fact what's known as a permanent link. And that's essentially two keystones, uh, one at each end of your cable run. And then uh, from the end of your cable run, you'll plug in a patch cable, which already has RJ45 plugs already attached to them. So the way this works is you, you uh, want to keep your cable distance to 295 feet between the keystones. Again, that's 295 feet. That number can go down depending on temperature. And then uh, that leaves you enough uh, slack for patch cables, 16 feet on one side, 16 feet on the other, to get up to the 328 feet, again, depending on temperature. So that is probably the best way of going about terminating ethernet. That's the way professional installers do it. Uh, if it's not uh, two keystones, uh, it's gonna be like a patch panel to a keystone, which is essentially the same idea. Uh, so professional installers have known that for years, and that's why the professional installers install networks that way. Uh, the next most desirable way would be from a keystone or patch panel uh, to a field termination plug. Now remember, the field termination plug has that secret sauce inside. It's got a printed circuit board in here, and uh, it terminates kind of like a keystone jack does, a toolless one. So what that means is that it's a lot less sensitive to fitment. The fitment of the insulated conductor and the jacket and all that is way less critical when it comes to field termination plugs, which makes them the better option than a plain old RJ45. The only problem is, is that sometimes you may run into a problem where you can't get a field termination plug into like a camera housing or an access point, in which case the next best way of handling that would be 
from a keystone jack or a patch panel to a RJ45 plug because you still have one component uh, on, in this uh, connection that provides impedance matching. Uh, it still gives you a very good chance of getting a good cable run, even though despite you're using an RJ45 on one end. Obviously, that comes with a lot of caveats. You have to have the right fitting cable. You have to do your job properly. The RJ45 has to be very well terminated in order for something like this to pass on a Fluke DSX-8000. Uh, probably the least desirable way is to use two RJ45 plugs just like that. Uh, the reason why is because there is no, uh, well, or plastic with eight golden contacts. There's no secret sauce, no impedance matching or anything else that's helping you out when it comes to RJ45s. So now this is not necessarily uh, noticeable or an issue at one gigabit speed, uh, like when you're using CAT5e or CAT6. But if you're using CAT6a and you're looking to push 10 gigabit speeds, then all of a sudden uh, these things can start causing you trouble. Um, and the reason why is because of crosstalk and return loss. CAT5e operates at 100 megahertz, CAT6 operates at 250, CAT6a operates at 500. And as soon as you go above 350 megahertz, in other words, towards CAT6a, what happens is, is that crosstalk at the connector can start to become a problem. Um, and it, not just that, but also what's known as return loss, which is where the signal that is reflected back is weaker than, uh, way too weak than when it got sent out. So RJ45s can cause issues with performance. Now you may not even notice it. Uh, the fact is, is that if you have a CAT6A cable and you're only pushing one gigabit on it, you're not operating that cable at 500 megahertz. So you may not necessarily know that you have the issue until you actually attempt to push 10 gigabit, in which case, you, if it isn't properly terminated, you definitely will notice something wrong because you're not gonna reach 10 gigabit. Or if you do, it may not be reliable. So believe it or not, uh, if you wanna make a patch cable in the field, the proper way is to actually use two, two field termination plugs. Uh, because again, you've got that secret sauce, you've got that, you know, that, uh, that printed circuit board in there. They're not all that sensitive to fitment. Um, they're much more forgiving. So if you have a field termination plug at both ends and you're dealing with CAT6A, uh, you have a much better chance of getting a, a really good cable run out of it. Uh, the other alternative is, is to pick up pre-terminated patch cables that have been properly tested and vetted out uh, by someone who knows what they're doing. Uh, and like I said, it's easy to get a bad one. So um, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, a lot of times people don't quite understand uh, what the differences are between these types of terminations and where some are beneficial and where some are least, less than desirable but still needed. And I mean, I understand the, 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 the conundrum. Um, it, it, when you walk into, especially if you're DIYers, if you walk into a Best Buy or any other store for that matter, you're going to come across a patch cable like this, and there's going to be a whole wall of them. So your, your assumption is, is that when you're making Ethernet cable runs that you somehow you know, have to use an RJ45 plug. And the, the truth of the matter is, is that although that appears to be the case, that's actually not how you're really supposed to do it. You're supposed to be putting this stuff into like punch down jacks or other types of keystones. And if you need to put an RJ45 plug in on the field, uh, then a field termination plug is, is the ideal way of going. Um, so it's just one of those things that you may not have known. And some people end up with performance issues or trouble and they can't understand quite why. Well, that would be why. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comment section. I'd be happy to get back to you. Uh, hopefully I haven't caused a huge firestorm controversy here, or maybe I did. Let's start a good discussion over this. Subscribe to our channel. And with that much, I'm going to say you have a great day. Happy networking.